Hello again everyone, and welcome back. Recently, I had a chance to check out Debian 12, the latest release of the popular Linux distribution. It's also known as Debian Stable because it's a rock solid distribution. And in that review, when I did review it, I, well, loved it. In fact, I told you guys in that review that I was going to switch to it, and that's exactly what I did. I also created a video that goes over the net install installer, which is one of two ways that you can install Debian. But I haven't gone over the second method until now. In today's video, what I'm going to do is show off the live installer for Debian 12. In fact, there's several live installers for Debian 12, each one features a different desktop environment. So what I'm going to do is show you what's different between the two, and I'm also going to show you how to use the live installer to install Debian on your system. But before I get to that though, I do need to take a moment to mention the sponsor for today's video. If you're looking for a cloud provider that's affordable, flexible, and reliable, then look no further than Akamai Connected Cloud. With Akamai's cloud platform, you can spin up Linux servers quickly, and the platform contains all the features you'll need to deploy full-featured solutions. And using the marketplace, you could easily deploy applications such as Nextcloud, Rocket Chat, Mastodon, WordPress, Pi-hole, Plex, Jenkins, and many more. In fact, there's over 100 applications available in the marketplace. If you want to set up a custom Linux instance, you could do that too. All the popular Linux distributions are available on the platform, including, but not limited to, Debian, CentOS, Fedora, Ubuntu, and many others. In fact, even Arch Linux is available. So check out Akamai Connected Cloud with the URL that you see on the screen right now, which will do two things. First, it'll help support this channel, which I'll really appreciate, and it'll also get you $100 in starter credit to check out the platform. And thank you yet again to Akamai for sponsoring this video. All right, with that out of the way, it's time to check out the live installer for Debian 12. So let's get started. Now, right here, I have a very generic looking website, but you know what? We don't really need flashiness when it comes to the Debian website. This is just a web page from the Debian website where we can download the ISO images that we're looking for. Now, if I scroll down right about here, we have a list of ISO images. Each one of these live ISO images for Debian 12 represents a supported desktop environment. And what I'll also do is leave a short URL on the screen right now that'll get you right to this page. So that way you don't have to type a long URL like you see in my address bar. It'll take you directly to the page you're supposed to be on to get access to these ISO images. Like I mentioned, each one of these is going to feature a supported desktop environment. So the first thing you have to do is choose which one you want to try first. So we might want to go with Cinnamon, maybe Gnome, KDE Plasma, LXDE, LXQt, Mate, XFCE, and so on. So we have quite a few desktop environments to choose from, and each one of these ISO images will contain just that one environment. Now, if you don't have a choice, the GNOME environment is probably the best bet. It's pretty much the default when it comes to Debian, although default to Debian doesn't really mean all that much because each of these are supported. What you'll do is download one of the ISO images. So in my case, I'll download this one right here, and that'll get me the GNOME version of the live install media for Debian. And as we can see, it's downloading right now. All right, so now the Debian live image that I've chosen is now downloaded. So what I can do is use this ISO image to create bootable media that I could use to boot into the Debian live environment. If you don't already know how to do that, there's two options that I can recommend. First of all, I highly recommend something like Ventoy. I've done a video on Ventoy. Ventoy allows you to dedicate an entire flash drive to be installation media for various Linux distributions. You could hold as many ISO images on that flash drive as you have room for. And that way you could even download most of these ISO images if you wanted to try them all, all from one flash drive. You could also do it the old fashioned way if you want to use the ISO image to create a dedicated flash drive for installing Debian, that's up to you. If you wanna check out my Ventoy video, I'll leave a video for that right about here. 
and that'll walk you through the process of using Ventoy to set up a multi-boot environment for various Linux ISO images. If you prefer to go the more generic approach or the classic approach and dedicate an entire flash drive to Debian Live, then I'll leave a video for my USB imager tutorial right about here that'll walk you through that process. Just keep in mind that video is quite old at this point, so it's not going to be the same format. Anyway, at this point, what you'll do is reboot your computer into your Debian Live installer, and then we'll go ahead and see the process of using the live environment to install Debian. What I'll do is boot my computer into the Debian installer, and I'll be right back. All right, so now we're booting up. Good sign so far. You see the boot splash. Sometimes live media can take longer to boot than the real installed version would take. Just keep that in mind. But I'll wait for this to finish. It should be done shortly. And check it out. We are actually using Debian right now. Again, I haven't installed it. The live mode allows you to demo the distribution before you install it. So what I'll do is just click on this window right here. The mode that I was in was the overview mode that you can access by pressing super on your keyboard. But this is the main desktop right here for Debian 12. Now we could go through this little wizard right here to fill out some information. I'm going to leave all of these at their default. I don't need Wi-Fi since I have a wired connection, but it's good that it shows the Wi-Fi networks here. That means that my Wi-Fi card is supported, so that's a good sign. Anyway, I'll skip that. I'll go next, skip, and then I'll click this button right here to start using Debian. Now the first thing that I recommend that you do is open up a web browser and Debian comes with Firefox by default. So we can click on activities right here. We can come down here to Firefox ESR. That's the default browser. And we can just make sure that a web page renders properly. We already know that it does because, well, this is a valid website. But just to make sure, you can go to my website, for example, learnlinux.tv, just like the name of the channel. And what you could do is view a YouTube video just to make sure that it actually works and that you can do that. So, for example, I'll click on this video. And as we can see, that works just fine. So we know web browsing is able to work. And if you have another monitor, for example, if you have dual screens, you could try that. You could plug in a printer, what have you. But once you are sure that Debian will work on your system, which you'll know because you're using the demo mode or live mode, then we can proceed to install it. So we could click on activities. And then come down here to the install Debian application. We'll click on that. And now it's asking us to enter a password, but we didn't set a password. Do we even know what the password is? Well, this is something about Debian that might be a little confusing to some people. It didn't give us the password, but I'll tell you what the password is right now. The password is live. That simple. So L-I-V-E. And as you can see, I typed in live. So I'll click Authenticate, and if it works, we should see the installer appear. And we are seeing the installer. Now, by default, the installer looks really weird. I mean, we can't really read anything. To fix this, we could just move our cursor here to the edge and expand this to make it larger, which is what I'm going to do. You may or may not have this problem. If you do, it's easy to solve. You just expand the window, but you may not run into this if you don't have a 4K display. It just depends on your resolution. But anyway, at this first screen right here, it's telling us which distro we are installing. Of course, it's Debian 12. And it allows us to choose our language right here. So if your language is something other than the default, you can change this. But I'm going to leave it on American English. And we could also view the release notes if we want to, but I'll click Next. And what we'll do here is choose our location. We can click on the map to choose our location, or we could choose our region from the dropdown right here. Either way should be fine. And the reason why this comes up is because it gives you an opportunity to choose your location, which will do things like set your time zone and things like that. 
So what we want to do is try to get this as close to our location as we can. I'm in Michigan, so New York is technically the correct time zone. But if we wanted to be more specific, we could just find our little area here. Detroit is close enough. And this graphic is really small, so if you can't see it, then you could simply drop down the menus right here to choose your individual time zone or your location. So you could choose your region and then the time zone. So that's what I have here. I'll click next. And then next up, we'll choose our keyboard layout. It's defaulting to English US in my case. If it's something different for you, if your keyboard is using a different layout, you could choose that here, but I'll go ahead and click next. And now we get some options as far as how we want to install Debian. Now I'm going to show you how to install Debian as the only operating system on your computer. If you're following along with me, then I ask you to have already backed up all of your important information. If you lose something, that would be very sad. So you don't want to lose anything that's important to you. So if you are going to install Debian right now and you haven't backed up all of your files, I recommend you pause this video, back up your hard drive, and then you can resume it. If you continue past this point, I'm going to assume that there's nothing on your computer that you care about. So what we could do is erase the disk. At least in my case, that's what I want, a full installation. And that'll give me a chance to go ahead and make Debian my only operating system. We can also do manual partitioning. We could also install Debian alongside another operating system if we have something else. I'm just going to go over the full installation method here. And another thing that you want to check is make sure that the correct hard drive is selected here. This dropdown will allow you to choose your hard drive or your target hard drive for Debian if you have more than one. I only have this one anyway, so I'll leave that alone. Another thing that we could do on this screen here is you can, if you want to, you could check this box to encrypt your hard drive. If you do, you have to type in a passphrase and then the passphrase again. You will have to remember this because it will ask you every time you boot your computer. So if you want to encrypt your drive, make sure you do this. And if your computer is going to be used for business purposes, like for your company or something like that, you definitely should encrypt your hard drive just in case your laptop becomes stolen or something like that. You don't want secrets to leak out to people that don't need to see that. I'll leave that up to you. If you check this, you will have to enter that password like I mentioned at the beginning. But for simplicity's sake, I'll just uncheck that and we'll just leave it as erase disk in my case, and then I'll click next. Now here we could type our name. This is for the default user account. So I'll type in my name here. And I like to simplify my username just to my first name. For the name of the computer, you can name it whatever you'd like. I'm just going to leave it at the default. It already knew what my computer name was supposed to be because the model of computer that I'm using is a Thelio desktop. And it just prefixed my name to the front of that. Anyway, we'll go ahead and type in a password for our user account. Type it in there twice. If you want to automatically log in, you could check this box here. I don't recommend you do that unless you're setting up something like a kiosk for general use or something like that. I'm going to leave that unchecked. We'll click next. And it's going to give us a summary of everything that the installer is going to do. So just make sure that it's targeting the correct hard drive. It'd be quite embarrassing if you wipe the wrong thing. And I've done that. It's not fun, believe me. So just make sure you check all of this through. And once you've done that, I'll click install. That'll finalize the process. And now Debian 12 is installing on my computer. So what I'll do at this point is just fast forward time and I'll be right back as soon as it's done. All right, so the process is complete. By default, as you can see right here, restart now is checked. So what's going to happen is the machine will reboot and then I'll be able to log in to my brand new Debian installation. So I'll click done. And now it's going to reboot. And take a look at this. We have the login screen for Debian 12. It even has my username right here. So I could click on that. I'll type in my password, the same password that I set during installation. And there we go. We are now using Debian 12. And you know what? It's a lot faster now that I have this installed on the hard drive. I mentioned earlier that performance could be a little slower on your flash drive, but that's okay. Now that this is installed, I could go ahead and set this up. I'll just skip all of this just like I did last time. And now 
I officially have Debian 12 installed on my computer, and I was able to accomplish that with the live install media, so I hope that was helpful. And there's our video. At this point, if you were following along with me, you now have your very own Debian 12 installation with your desktop environment of choice, and I hope you enjoy it. If you've enjoyed this video, then please consider clicking the like button to let YouTube know that you enjoyed this content. If you do that, I would really appreciate that. And also consider subscribing to Learn Linux TV because I have some awesome content coming very soon. Anyway, in the meantime, thank you so much for checking out this video. I really appreciate it, and I'll see you next time.